She's still watching Disney movies, and she is choosing a white princess over princesses of color. Have you talked to her about that? All the time. My three-year-old daughter is very, her favorite princess is Moana. Love it. It's a good sign. Yeah. But then I also thought, you know, there's a, a little bit of cultural appropriation here. She wants to be Moana for Halloween. Mm-hmm. So how do we navigate that? Today, we are gonna to react to the final clip that Matt Walsh is releasing from his new movie, Am I Racist? You're a football player. It's in your blood. That's racist. Your soul. That's racist. Your eyes, that's gay. I was browsing on our YouTube channel today and I saw the thumbnail that said, can toddlers be racist? Honestly, I'm 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 over it at this point. <laughs> I'm excited. This, how can how could that even be a topic of conversation? I haven't seen this because I want to give my genuine All right. reaction. All right. To can toddlers be, be racist? I have a toddler, so I am very this curious better be about a, this. This better be a funny clip. It better be worth it. Just right. saying, y'all. So let's start with uh, what should be the last sneak peek clip from Am I Racist that you'll see before the movie comes out. Um, if you want any more clips, you know, you need to go see the movie to see those, you damned freeloaders. <laughs> uh, this one was released exclusively by Megyn Kelly yesterday. And in this, you'll see a small snippet from the very beginning of my, my journey. Uh, the first person I talked to, actually, in the film, uh, you'll see here, and this is a woman named Kate Slater, who's a prominent anti-racist educator. Mm. Uh, <laughs> at least that's what she calls herself, yep. an anti-racist educator. DEI specialist. And she's the, uh, she's the person who kind of sets me up and, and sends me on my journey. She, she created, you'll see this in the film, she created something that she calls the anti-racist roadmap. Oh, so we figured that starting this out, you know, uh, I need to know where to go. I need to know who I should talk to. I need to know what my roadmap. journey should look like. And so we should talk to someone who, you know, has literally made the map oh, yeah. on oh, how, yeah. to, um, how, to, how to confront your whiteness and, oh. and uh, decolonize yourself. So oh, we yeah. start with her. And in this clip, you'll see um, our, as part of the, the overall discussion, there was a brief moment where we kind of focused in on uh, an important topic and this is where I get the, you know, frankly, pretty devastating news that my three-year-old daughter uh, might be racist. Listen. Devastating. My daughter's four years old. Mine too. I am an anti-racist educator, quote unquote. She's still watching Disney movies and she is choosing a white princess over princesses of color. Have you talked to her about that? All the time. My three-year-old daughter is very, her favorite princess is Moana. Love it. It's a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> but then I also thought, you know, there's a, a little bit of cultural appropriation here. She wants to be Moana for Halloween. Mm-hmm. So how do we navigate that? <laughs> do I go and, and, and buy the Pacific Islander native uh, attire for my white three-year-old? Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. But th I guess the, w what we might call the Moana problem here is, <laughs> is what, uh, on one hand, is cultural appropriation. On the other hand, there's gravitating towards uh, white characters. Right. So it's almost like no matter which way you go, you right. end up back in racism. We think every space belongs to us because we live in a white Pause. supremacist society. We live in a, we wh live in a white... <laughs> What's the evidence for that? Do you want me to bring the receipts? Do I need to bring the receipts? Oh, no. No. I'm curious because it seems like a lot of people on the left or even not even on the left that are anti-racist educators, they don't give you facts of how we are a white supremacist country when in fact there is no laws in the United States of America that pushes down any other color or ethnic group from whites. Why are we just talking about kids? Yeah, that's true. It, because that's the whole point of this. I want to keep it simple for y'all. I can't believe my daughter, my four-year-old daughter, would want to see a white my, Disney princess over Moana. My daughter's almost five. She loves Elsa. She loves Elsa. But she's half Mexican. She loves Encanto. She loves <laughs> Moana. She yeah. loves them all. It would have been different if she said, we should be introducing Barbies or princesses of other races mm. as well mm. so that they get a well-balanced approach But when she said the problem is navigating mm. towards diversity mm. Is your daughter racist? You know what's the first thing she said when she had like a black Barbie or a black Princess doll What'd you do? She she said why is it darker something like that? And then I said, well, she's just, you know, she's different. We're all people and some people are, you know, are white. Some people are black. Some people are this and that. She's like, she's so pretty. See? First thing she ever said about a princess doll. So she, she, um, 
She was expressing her anti-racist, you know. I must have been, I must be a good father. I taught her right. America, an inherently racist country? I think the word inherent is challenging there. Mm -hmm. If we say- Fundamentally. Fundamentally, yes. <laughs> America is racist to its bones. All of the- So inherently. Yeah. They gonna say you racist. Am I racist? In theater September 13th, rated PG-13. Buy tickets now. <laughs> he doesn't yes, even know what to say. Yes, the uh, Moana problem. Uh, and, you know, perhaps that'll be the name of my next documentary. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and fortunately, it turns out that my three-year-old daughter, now four, by the way, is uh, racist, racist yeah. for liking Moana. Yeah, um, how dare but she? would also be racist for not liking Moana. <laughs> so, you know, she's racist if she gravitates towards white princesses, racist if she doesn't. Racist either way. No matter wow. which way you go, you end up back in racism, as we just heard. I that's will not, say this. pretty the, racist. The, you know the community that doesn't care about its crap at all? Latinos and Latinas. People without Mexican heritage can partake in the celebrations, but if they do, it should be done more respectfully. Yeah, I mean, if you cultural if you appropriation, were, if, if you go up to a Mexican with sombrero on, they're not going to They gonna, are going to love, gonna love it. They're going to think you are the coolest cracker it's not there's ever been. And You'll it's, be the coolest white cracker they've ever seen in their life, and they will but love David, you for if it. if you're wearing a sombrero, you're not embracing your whiteness. No, but you're embracing theirs, but you're also a pro <laughs> culture you're embracing appropriation. embracing their whiteness? So you can't want to be like them, but you have to... So, David, this is confusing, let me ask you, people. Let me ask you, how do we become less racist? How do we become less racist? I mean, that's... <laughs> I think that's the crux of this film. We have we have to strive, bro, to you become less is? racist. Masochism. We need to take pleasure in our own de demise. It's a and self deprecation. And self yeah, pain and suffering. So how do we become more? How do we become more feminine and less masculine? More feminine and less masculine. Yeah. Well, you can take some estrogen, some yeah. soy milk. Yeah, yeah. Soy um, milk grows man boobs. I've heard. Yeah, it's a, yeah. yeah it's a good or story. how else can you become more feminine? You shoot it right up the butt too. <laughs> It's a quicker way. It goes right into the bloodstream. You that's bypass you, that's the liver. how you liver. get that nice booty. <laughs> yeah, it bypasses the liver. We've I'm really trying to understand. We, we've reached a new low, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, I, mean, I, I want to be less racist. Apparently. I want to love everybody. Apparently, I'm, I was born racist. And I uh, I grew up, and as I was going through my, my adolescence, I I'm just imagining became racist. That All the moment when God implanted me my soul into that baby mm. body, mm. he said, Remember who you are. Mm. You are not to like other groups of other people. When you looked in the reflection of water, did you see a black version of yourself staring back at you? It's like another life. No. Well, f <laughs> but, but also remember that based on this whole world of you can be whatever you want, I could technically be black. But you identify as black. We no, talked about I can this. Be, yeah, I can be black. You're black. If a guy can be a woman, then why can't I be black? Yeah. Because if you look at it, and again, we watched mm. the whole Jubilee, mm. Charlie Kirk against the 25 liberal college students. He mm. made the very interesting argument. If someone wants to be black, like blackface or whatever, why mm. can't they be? Mm. And all the students said, well, it's because uh, it, race and gender and sex are all different. It's binary. They're, they're all, they're, it's all they're, you can't compare the two. Huh. And he said, well, the difference is, is that if I take a black person and a white person, do a blood test... Mm. There is no difference. You mm. can't tell the difference. We all but if bleed, you but you have a man and a woman, red. but if you have a man and a woman, I can tell the difference of it. Yeah, because the chromosomes. So technically I can become black. Hmm. I'll I'll do some reverse Michael Jackson crap. What do you guys identify as out there? I'm very curious because I identify now as a uh, polymorphic anorexic racist white guy. He identifies as black. With a smidge of Hawaiian beautifulness. Hawaiian punch? I'm I'm Samoan in, inside, bro. Yeah, is it because you eat so much food? No, I just want to be like The Rock. Okay, look like The Rock. You could be in the sequel. Yeah, yeah, Moana too. Yeah, I'll be yeah. like his retarded little brother. Yeah, you could. <laughs> Speaking of that, we are so glad that you guys tuned into this episode of Absolute Ridiculous. The talk. election, the election's happening tonight. So yeah. the next couple of days, we're going to well, come the debate, out not the election. I just need the election to get here, bro. I'm jumping the gun on everything. I'm so sick. By the way, I'm so sick of all these election campaign ads. Bro. They're just so annoying. They just attack each other all the time. I'm like, just tell me a policy. Tell me what you're going to actually do for the country. But that's another video. That's another video. But the next couple of days, we're going to come out with content from the debate. So yes. stay tuned for stay that. Tuned. Also, guys, in the description, 
check out our Rumble and our X because yes. we are starting to be active on that. We weren't active on that the whole last year, yep. but we are getting realization that we need to be platform agnostic yep. just in case anything happens with YouTube. We love you, YouTube, but you just never know. So make sure to go and check us out there. And X, we're a little bit more unfiltered. Mm -hmm. So if you want a bit more, if you want to sharing see stuff all day, every day about crazy stuff. So check us out there. But we appreciate you guys. Don't forget to subscribe. Links in the description and below again, to our socials. As we've said on the other videos, we're going to go see this video in theater. It comes out, what, three or four days? So later. Am this, I racist? Yeah, probably this weekend we're going to go see it. So do are you, you racist? Let us know. We'll see you in the next video. Love you. Peace. Peace.